What's up guys? Based on the title of today's video, you can guess what we're going to talk about. Yes, the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. My name is Darius. I'm a registered nurse. I work in an ICU. Um, I'm just going to touch on some topics of the coronavirus stuff that many of you already know how it's affecting basically the entire world and how it's been affecting me personally in my workplace, working in a hospital. All right, so in case some of you do not know exactly what the coronavirus is, based from the World Health Organization, the coronavirus are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Coronavirus disease, also known as COVID-19, is a new strain that was discovered in 2019 and has not been previously identified in humans. Coronaviruses are zoonotic, meaning they are transmitted between animals and people. So as um, some of you have heard that, I guess this was spread from someone in China eating a bat. So there's the animal and people right there. Detailed investigations found that SARS-CoV was transmitted from civet cats to humans and mers cov from dromedary camels to humans. Several known coronaviruses are circulating in animals that have not yet infected humans. So how does one contract the coronavirus? Well, the coronavirus is contracted from people sitting next to each other, person to person, and within about six feet from one another. Um, the virus is a droplet respiratory disease, meaning when a person coughs or sneezes, those little particles those are through the air, it gets into um, any openings, into passages, the oral passages of another human, and that's how the virus is contracted. If that person um, was infected, that cough or sneeze. However, though it is not thought to be the main source of um, the virus spreading, it is also possible that, let's say this countertop, if this countertop had coronavirus and someone were to touch it, and then touch their mouth or their face, anything that's open, um, that the virus could spread that way as well. So just be cautious, like don't touch everything, use hand sanitizer guys, cover your mouths. We have to protect ourselves and each other. There is currently no cure for the coronavirus, which is why basically the entire world is on lockdown. Uh, my apartment complex is on lockdown, all the gyms are closed, um, public facilities are closed, and this is like throughout the nation, guys. Um, there's a reason why we have to self-quarantine if you're sick, if you know there's a loved one that's maybe just coughing or anything. Just take the extra precaution to um, stay away from that person if possible. Um, it's super, super important. Like this virus spreads very, very quickly. I was among one of the people who just looked at it as okay, whatever, it's just another food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then every single day, um, this virus was infecting thousands of people and people are dying. Um, I also believe that maybe that the reason why people are dying is because, because it's spreading so fastly that these healthcare facilities, we cannot accommodate the amount of people that are getting infected. It attacks your respiratory drive, meaning if it gets bad enough, and this is not the case for everyone, um, if it gets bad enough, you might need a ventilator. So if there's thousands of people getting infected at a time, we don't have that many ventilators across the world to accommodate these people, which is most likely the reason why these people are dying because they cannot get the proper treatment they need because of how fast they're being infected. With that being said, if we can take the necessary precautions to slow down this disease, then we can slow the amount of people getting infected, which means then those people can have the proper treatment and get the right help that they need. Let me give you guys just a little rundown um, or a little inside look on how it's affecting my hospital. I can't speak for all hospitals, but for my particular hospital, which is a level one trauma center, very well-known hospital, um, very busy, my hospital alone Guys, we're running out of masks and gowns, like the essentials, right? Um, supplies are low. We were told that, I don't know if it's employees or I don't know if it's family members, that people were taking home boxes of masks with them. Um, so with us being 
a facility where people who may have this disease come to to get treatment well we have to be able to protect ourselves and we're running on low supplies um low supplies ourselves to help take care of these people um we have our unit our icu on lockdown um anyone who comes to the hospital we screen them at the entrances so we screen them um we don't allow children and by screening i mean like do they have a cough a fever um when he knows any type of those symptoms, we automatically send them away because we cannot take these chances. Our patients, there is a lot of patients we have that are intubated and there are a lot of patients that we have sent out screenings for. So we have a screening and then we send out the actual COVID-19 test to California and that takes about three to five days um, to get back. So our ICU looks like way different than before. There's so many droplet precautions outside the patient's windows. And again, that means that a drop of precaution is a disease um, or an infection that spreads through the air from coughing or sneezing. So um, another, I guess, beneficial factor that we would think um, the patients that are intubated, at least that's a closed system, but you still take every precaution necessary. If that tube becomes dislodged, if you have to intubate um, anything, if you have to suction, you still want to be prepared, have your face shield, have your mask, have your gown, have your gloves. You gotta take all the proper personal protection that you can. The people who are at highest risk for this disease are people who are immunocompromised, meaning they have a decreased immune system to fight these diseases, older people and children. Um, obviously stress across the nation, the world is just through the roof. Um, I would just advise or recommend that everyone just take the necessary precautions to worry about yourself, worry about your loved ones, don't worry about running out of food, don't worry about not being able to walk outside. It's gorgeous outside, like I actually would encourage it, but you just have to be mindful to try to touch each other um, a lot less frequently. Um, hand sanitizer masks if you guys have them, gloves if you need them or have them. Um, you can still go outside. Like Mask gatherings obviously we know are limited, which is actually really smart, it's a great idea. At first I thought it was kind of like, okay, that's a little ridiculous, but no, it's necessary. This is what we have to do to get ahead of this. But you guys can go outside. You don't have to steal all the water. You don't have to fight each other with food, water, toilet paper. One, the disease doesn't affect your um, gastrointestinal system. You're not gonna be crapping out your brain for days. Um, it's not an apocalypse, guys. Just relax. If you really are that concerned, then take care of yourself and each other. That being said, everybody stay safe. Protect yourselves, protect each other. Let's beat this.